ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, boys and <laughs> girls, <laughs> welcome to another episode of the Universal Lens. As always, I am John F. Emilio. And I am, uh, ready for this, Enrique J. Beltra. Jose, baby. That's right. It stands for Jose. <laughs> Absolutely. Jose A is in the house. Yeah, because the guy next door was Jose B. <laughs> uh, let's go with Jose. Uh, so I hope everybody had a nice week. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Today was the solar eclipse. Uh, so when you watch this, it will have been past already. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Uh, we got a little, we had a nice little preview here in Jersey. Actually, yeah. it got a little cloudy, which was nice because, uh, believe it or not, the cloud layer was thin enough where it became a filter where you could look at it without glasses. Really? On. Yeah. So when, once the clouds passed in front of it, you the, the sun loses because it gets filtered through. Right. Sun just becomes a white ball, and then you just saw the shadow. So there was no more, you weren't getting all that light. So I was able to just look up. And see it, and I actually got some great shots. I put one on Facebook, dude. Before that, actually, that was an amazing picture, right? Know? Amazing. I, that was people. I, I'm like, you just click with my phone. That's it. Okay. So the time I had to go see this thing, I didn't have time. So literally, I'm running from place to place to place to place to place. I even <clears> gave <throat> blood today. I donated blood. Oh, I saw yeah something on Facebook. You were doing that. place to place to place, and then all of a sudden, I Good finished at the bank, and I knew I, we were gonna do this. So I ran home. And I had to do some other stuff. And I said, oh, my God, if I don't go outside and watch now, I I'm going to miss it. So I stopped what I'm doing. I go outside with my glasses that thank you to my wife for the glasses. Oh, she brought you that. That's good. right. Yeah. If you listen, don't look. Yeah. I hope nobody looked at it without glasses. So, But I did. I wanted, some I wanted to see it. Al natural, right? So I go out. I look up. I'm like, where is the sun? Where's the sun? I had to, I had to go out from under my cardboard. Ah, yeah. oh, there it is. Saw it. I'm like, I'm not seeing anything. Put on the glasses. Saw it. Yeah. So with the glasses on, I was able to see it's like a crescent. It was a crescent. Yeah, At yeah. that point, it was a crescent. It was 90, 89% coverage is what we kind of saw, 88, 89% right. coverage. I yeah. was like, that's pretty cool. I don't know what yeah. it means, but, you know, pretty cool. And then what I did was I took the glasses, I put it in front of the camera, and I'm like. Oh, that, uh, that's why I might have come out. If you, were probably, if you would have done it with the camera alone, if you would have wore the glasses and just pointed it at the camera, you might have got a better shot. Usually you want to hear what happened. Uh -huh. So I did that. I had the glasses, and I went like this. The glasses don't. Oh, you can't see the screen. Don't let me see. Right. Yeah. yeah so it was yeah. all black. I'm like, all right, forget yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I was literally sitting in my chair. I was having a smoking cigar outside. I was sitting in my chair. My wife was sitting in me. And I'm looking up. And the whole time I was doing it with my phone first, like watching through my phone because I don't have glasses. So I'm putting my phone like this. I'm just kind of looking at my phone right. so I could see it. And then all of a sudden it started to get cloudy. When I saw it got cloudy and I just kind of peeked up, I'm like, it's like it's like the sun behind the clouds. You could look because the clouds become a layer of filtering. It filters the light out. Right. But all you see is just a round ball of white. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, as it got later and later, I noticed, oh, I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, and I saw it coming and moving and moving and moving and moving. And I just started taking random pictures with it whenever I could because the clouds would kind of shift in and out where it would get really bright. And when it got really bright, yeah. I couldn't look. So I wouldn't look. Once those clouds got just dense enough where I could see it again, and I looked up, I was like, holy crap, I can see it just with my glasses on. And I just started taking pictures. But anyway, it was very cool. Yeah, yeah, it was very cool. I was in the bank when it was starting to get dark. But it was light. It, it was weird. It, it was yeah, dark, it, it but didn't it was light. Get, it twilighted. And, I, and when I say twilight, I mean barely. I mean, you could tell that the sunlight diminished. The birds got a little quieter by me. Um, but that's really, and it, it felt like it just got a little bit, it got a little quiet for a little bit. And I don't know why. Like but, a little eerie. A little eerie. But it never, it, I thought it was going to get darker. I know, why are we talking about this? But I know, I thought it was going to get darker. It didn't get as dark as I thought it would. I figured, because we were like 89% coverage totality. I'm like, all right, well, that's 90% you know, of the moon is covering the sun. I'm like, that's a lot of light that you're going to lose. But still, it was just enough to just take it down. I mean, maybe it went down like 15, 20%, the actual lighting. Kind of got the a very, just kind of, they could twilightish, but the sky never got dark. Really, like we, I saw people like in Texas and other places where like their lights were on. Like it got, it went like it was dark. Really, like dark outside. Yeah. Really, yeah. I mean, you don't. Get, I don't think you get to the part where you can see stars. I don't know. I'm not sure, but but it, like some people posted videos. It was like where they got 100 percent means the moon covered the sun completely, and all you saw was a ring of fire, almost just like a white, a little ring around it. And that was uh, that was pretty cool. But anyway, anyway. fake news. Yeah. 
but very, uh, yeah, very cool to experience solar eclipses, yeah, you know, lunar eclipses, yeah, and Mother then, Nature doing what her this thing. is the next one is 2044. The universe, the, actually, the universe doing this thing, not Mother Nature, huh? 2044 is the next one, uh, here in the states and this area, maybe yeah. not, not, I, I mean, there's other places in the world you can go see one, something. I don't know if it's every year or every couple of years. I, I don't know the cycle, so don't yeah. take my word from it. Please. Well, that's five minutes. You're never going to get back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, but anyway. It's, it's, part of, it's part of our, our world. No pun, no pun intended. No, it is part of our world. Absolutely. It is. Both. Yeah. This... Very cool. Very cool to see, mother, to see the universe. You see mother, to see the universe do her thing. Yeah. yeah. So this proves that either there is a smart power performing this right or that develop the system or I don't know. we're living in a simulation and <laughs> we and scott uh, no, no, no. scott adams don't don't just don't discard because i yeah, I, yeah. I, I know it, it brings i've seen the matrix all four or five it four, brings four it, it brings a smile to your face but, and it even brings a smile to my yeah, face yeah, it's a fun it's a funny it's it's a, it's a it's premise a, it's a cool little premise it's a premise I mean, I'm not, we yeah. don't know no we don't we don't listen we we don't know we don't know because here we but, are, but we're yeah. It's it's another answer for a question we can't right. answer. We're here. We are. We're thinking we're the only ones. Let's say we're the only ones. And you hear the alien talk. It's in my opinion. I don't know. It's fodder, but we don't know. Don't so know. if we don't know, what if somewhere out there there's another bunch of beings going through the same thing? You know. Sure. I mean, obviously, I don't know if they're speaking English or. No word, you know. I don't know what what that is, <laughs> but we don't know, and because we don't know, it's hard to definitively say it's this, it's that, and that's oh, there, look, there's 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 no way of knowing. That's the, but that's the beauty of it, right? That's the yeah. that's the, that's the absolute beauty of it. So leave that to the nerds. We leave that we leave that to the scientists and the very intelligent rocket scientists and the neuroscientists and the. Uh, astrophysicists of the aerospace world. Aerospace engineers. Aerospace engineers, yes. I'm not pointing to him, his son. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'll point over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're the ones who figured that stuff out. But anyway, it was very cool. Definitely very cool to experience it. So hopefully everybody got a, got out today and was able to take a five-minute break in the day and and just kind of watch it. And like I, when I watched it, I, just, I tried to watch it with a like an awe. Like I'm not labeling it. Yeah, I took the pictures because I wanted to to just have it but also when, when i when i you know i put my camera down i'm just kind of when i was able to look up at it for like those brief moments where i would get those 20 30 40 seconds where i had that good cloud cover where i could look up without any problem you know i just kind of tried to be there with it and just just kind of watch it and just kind of notice myself watching it and like you know it, it's it was very cool because it's like you know this whole universal thing is kind of what we talk about on the show the universal lens how you so like i use the universal lens today to watch the eclipse you did. i did. You did i did right i did so in a way so anyway um but you know i had the same feeling cool. what the same feeling you just described because like here we are watching this phenomenon right it's supposed yeah, to happen it's a phenomenon sure only yeah, it doesn't happen every day. So, yeah. So I'm looking at it going, I don't want to diminish. I don't want to take away from its importance and because I'm wrapped up in my world, my life, you know. But I want to go outside and look at it because it's a phenomenon. Like, you know. it's It was a cool, it was something that I'm hoping people experienced and didn't just say, okay, I got to go look at it because I got to go look at it. I'll see what the fuss is about. It's it was it was a very cool thing to see how the universe physically right works in a way where these these kind of things happen and it kind of puts you in your cool. place. And what I mean by that is, when you're caught up in your own world, mm -hmm. it's your own world. And individually, we're all caught up in our own world, right? So I told just told you, I woke up, I had to go here, I had to go there, I had to that. caught up, in and then in the doing. Then you go I'm outside and wait. Doing. Let I got experiences, and you look up and you realize you are. Well, that's where you get a little bit of taste of the being of life, not the doing, but the being. Being meaning meaning the presence of life, where you're watching this thing happen, and also you get that sense of something. Wow, this is like this is like amazing. Like yeah. this, 
this this thing that happens, this phenomenon that happens, is an amazing. Yes, it's a scientific reason for the way orbits enter. You know the way the orbits are and how one passes in front of the other. I get all that, but even that in and of itself, if you stop and think about it, like the little things that you're doing during the day become very. Yes, they're important. Right on a practical level, understood. Before people like start telling me, "Oh, I don't pay my bills." I get that. But when you have moments like that happen and you get to witness the universe give you a show, take the time to, and I know people like, oh, everybody's going crazy over the eclipse. It wasn't, look, that's media makes it a big deal. Media makes it this whole, oh my God, that's 4 million people got to go here and yeah. it becomes a touristy thing. Attached to it. Attached to it. I get that. But to just sit in front of you on your front lawn, you could have experienced it. Yeah, if you want the totality, I guess you got to go somewhere, right? Because there is a certain linear path that it takes and you have to be in its head to get that 100, 100% coverage where you get night for, for a couple of minutes during the day. But just to go outside, wherever you were, and to experience the shifting of the way, the way the day just changed, the way the climate feels like all of a sudden it got chillier and colder. And you kind of realize there's something greater than, bigger than me, that's kind of yeah. working behind the scenes that makes all this kind of possible. And it gives you a sense of being part of something that's greater than yourself. And as I was saying before, all those, those things you have to do during the day, yes, they're important. I get it. But there's more to life than just doing things, right? And that was, for me, that was a, a good reminder or practice of being. Like, instead of doing things, I'm going to sit here, I'm just going to be, and I'm going to watch this. Right. It's like watching a sunset. So you could do it with a sunset. You don't need to do it with the eclipse. You don't have to wait another 20 years until it passes here or whenever it's going to pass here again, at least for the Northeast in Jersey. Catch a sunset. Watch the sunset. Watch, because you could watch a sunset without burning your retinas. Yeah. That's the beauty of it, right? Watch as, the, watch, watch as the sun, if, you, if you're by an ocean or, or, or horizon, just dips behind it. It, it gives you a feel, and it's almost an a eerie feeling of, wow. Like, I get caught up in my day-to-day -day nonsense of life, which, again, I will say this a thousand times because, yes, there is an importance to the day-to-day -day nonsense of life. I understand that. Function as a community, as a society, we need to do things. Understood. But if we don't realize that we need to take those breaks during the day, and I'm not saying once every once a week, like during the day. And today was a great example of finding a, a reason to do it. But tomorrow, when there's no eclipse, are you going to find a reason to go and just witness something without putting a meaning to it? Yeah. Whether you're watching a tree, watching a bird make its nest, watching the sunrise or the sunset, watching the clouds pass in the sky, going to, if you're by a, an ocean, going, just watching the waves come in and come out, come in and come out. Just realizing that there is more to life than just doing things. Like that's experiencing the most purest form of life, right? Watching the universe and mother nature work. Yeah. In and of itself, no matter what we're doing, the waves are going to come in, the waves are going to go out. Or the, the moon's going to circle around the, the earth, right? The earth and the sun, moon are going to circle around the sun. You're going to have these, these uh, things where uh, planets line up or, or the moon and the sun line up, and you get these beautiful eclipses. Like, bes besides your daily problems that you think you have, that your mind tells you are problems, they're life situations, but they are problems in your mind, and they consume you, and they take you down rabbit holes all day long, go outside, find a tree. Go outside and find a, find a squirrel running down the... Go find a, a wave. Go find a cloud. Go find something in nature. And that's why, for me, my bias is nature because when, I'm, when I look at nature, life seems to get very simple in that moment again. It's like, like, this is... Watching life work also makes me realize, okay, the stories I'm creating in my head, and we all have issues to deal with. Don't get me wrong. Some are going to be more pressing issues. I understand that. But there are issues that we could either deal with and solve, deal with, and not, unfortunately, be able to solve, but accept and still experience life, like still experience being a human being and being here and be able to experience this thing. Who was it? Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. He, there was a, I saw a video of him once where I, I think, he's, I think he's, he's entertaining to watch him and he's a brilliant person on top of it. There was this thing where he said, and I don't know the... I can't remember the exact mathematical statistics that he used, but the amount of people that haven't been born, like who had the opportunity but weren't born into this world 
are like it's it's x amount like it's exponentially larger than the amount of people who have had the opportunity to experience the universe to experience what's what the, whatever this is right whatever we call life to experience it actually experience it so he, the point he was like is do you realize how lucky you are I mean, like you go through life saying i'm not lucky just being born that was his point <coughs> excuse me just being born and being able to experience life is in and of itself with the statistics he was using a miracle that you actually were the one that was able to he goes, so everything else in life becomes secondary. Like, you're able to experience life. But instead, we do, what does our day become? I got to do this. I got to go here. I got to go there. Oh, my God, what time is it? I got to be here. I got to pick her up. I got to pick him up. And my kids do this and the SAT scores and uh, the college prep and oh, this and this and that. And the other thing, how am I going to do this? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And you look, 10 o'clock comes. You're exhausted. You go to bed. You get up tomorrow. You do the same thing. And I got to go here. I got to go there. I got to go this, 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 this. And then I, I love when I hear this. I can't believe I'm 50 already. Where'd the time go? You haven't been paying attention. Time travels just as fast, whether you're aware or not aware, because when the time is passed, the time is passed. So I think it's just your perception. But if you take a few minutes a day and stop and say, and this is me, right? You can do however you want. You want to meditate. You want to sit. You want to say a prayer. You want to go for a walk. I love being outside. Like I can sit in a chair outside and just stare at the sky and the trees. And for me, like, I feel like you, like I, I ground again. I get very just grounded. Like everything slows down for me all of a sudden. For mm -hmm. me, nature works. And it makes me appreciate life that much more. Right? When I'm having a bad day, when I'm having a bad day, quote unquote bad day, I love to go sit outside and just sit outside and just, just take it all in and everything slows down for me. But if I don't do that once in a while or whatever you're, Whatever it is for you, right? However you like, go for a run, mm -hmm. however you get your, but it's not a task that I need to do. It's a, I just want to be an, I just want to be alive and present right now or whatever's happening. If we don't do that, and now you turn around and 60 years past, 70 years past, okay? What have you done in your life? I don't need to hear your accomplishments. What have you experienced in life? But been there while it was happening, not a check, 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 check. Right? And I think, Opportunities like today to be able to sit aside and, ex and witness like this universal phenomenon that happens only once in a while and you have to be in a certain path to see it unless you want to travel and, and, and literally look at it and go, wow, like, like I'm able to experience, I'm, I have the opportunity to experience this. You said so much. Yeah, I know. I went on for a few minutes. No, 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 no. In content. Let me tell you something. So what I was trying to get to was... I had to step outside and I had to witness this phenomenon, but I didn't want to attach any story. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just wanted to gotcha. see it. Yeah. Right? And then I saw it. And then my mind says, here's a story I'm going to give you. You are nothing. Look at what this is. You are a speck with 6 billion, right? 6 billion people, 6 billion six other seven, specks yeah. throughout the world. Mm -hmm. like, but you're all like little fleas. Like this major power is large enough that when the major power does things, like the entire world can look up and see it. Like maybe not at the same time, but it's amazing what that huge power is. But it makes you feel small. But when you brought in DeGrasse Tyson. So we are among the privileged to have that's the word right yeah we are among the privileged and by the way doesn't mean if you're poor if you're rich we're among the privileged to be breathing on this earth above ground right we're experiencing this you're among the privileged so there's six billion of us and you said imagine the exponential ex exponential ex yeah people that are not yeah. they never had the opportunity experiencing to this yes. right and you're like, so it's a select club of a six billion people. I say six billion people. And when you look at it that way, you you start to really like go through everything and go, my God. It's like everything is everything that you think is significant is not as significant as it really is. In other words, I know what you're saying. It's it has magnified in your mind. 
and it's magnified in the mind of the other person that you're probably involved with. Yeah. But it's strictly magnified at our level. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's an unimportant level. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, an unimportant. I, I agree. No, I agree. And, <clears throat> and here's the last thing I'll say. When you said about uh, consciousness, so when I discovered mindfulness, when I discovered oh, acceptance, right? acceptance oh, awareness, the clock, believe it or not, the clock is more on my side. And what I mean by that is the clock is, you see, like you knew exactly what I'm saying. It's like pre-mindfulness, the clock ran me. And don't get me wrong. We live in America. The clock runs. The clock runs. You got to work. You got to this. You have a schedule. I got to pick it up. Things happen. But when you have the mindfulness filter or, you know, awareness filter, you process the events differently and time is a little slower for you. Your, I, I, yes, because your perception changes. All perception. Yeah, yeah. 60 because seconds 60 on seconds, clock time, it's, it's still 60 seconds, it. right? It's like, it's like if you're going somewhere, you go wherever, wherever you're going, right? You're on your way there and, and somewhere you don't want to be, it feels like the clock is dragging, right? But like if you're having a good time, you're doing something that you want to do, like you look up 20 minutes past, 40 minutes past, an hour past. You're like, oh my God, I don't even have an hour left. Another hour past. And you're like, oh my God, I felt like it went by in two seconds. No, it was still 120 minutes, so it was two hours. But your perception was because you were so engaged and so present with what was happening or whatever. You were just so engaged with what was happening. The clock seems to have moved faster. You were, your mind was like, go here, go do this, go do this, go do this, go do this. Blah, blah. And when your mind keeps you engaged, yes, the, the perception of clock moves quicker. But you said something before. It reminds me of uh, oh, what's his name? The guy who does um, the guy who does Family Feud now. Um, oh, Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. I don't take credit for things that I don't come up with. Steve Harvey. Uh, and I saw a video of him. Uh, I guess he does. He talks between sets or between the shows right. or after shows. He talks to his crowd. He's very. He's a religious, but he seems like a very like yeah. mindful, spiritual religious I think person. Before they start rolling, he's just warming the he crowd. He warming the crowd. Yeah. And he was talking, he, he was saying, he said something to the fact that, he goes, you know, people go around saying, I got to go to work today. I got to meet with this person today. I got to do this today. I got to take care of this today. And he said, he goes, and that's why I loved it. He goes, watch your language. He goes, we change one word in that sentence. Watch all the changes. He goes, I get to go to work today. I get to be with my family today. I get to take care of this test today. He goes, one word is bound with stress and the other one is, is liberating. It's an opportunity. It's, it's, it's invigorating. It's, it's, um, I actually have an opportunity to do this as opposed to I have to. He goes, you know, one is like this. One, I got to do this. The other one is I get to do this. So look at my hands. Even when I say it, if I say, oh, my God, I got to do this today. Like you would notice my body gets tense because I got to do this today. You clench. You, you clench. When you, when you say I get the opportunity to do this today. My tone changes, my hands change, my body language changes, and everything changes. Like your, your perception changes. So like, I love that because all we talk about is language on the show, so right? Steve Harvey is pretty much singing from the same hymn book that we constantly talk about where we reframe. So he reframed it. Yeah, yeah. a lot of things he says has a lot to do with like... So he reframed, reframed it, and yeah. that's all you did. Let me reframe this for you. I'm going to change this one word. And when we talk, at least when I go through my things that I like to listen to and, and read, and you know, you know me, just today I told you about another one. But like when you listen to Dr. Joe, Bob Proctor, and you listen to these things, it's 100% spot on <clears throat> because an, an unconscious me, I'm, I'm only going to talk about me because, you know, I, I, I know me pretty well. An unconscious me, you had those bad days where, Work is heavy. Like, uh, and I'm sure it's, it'll happen, but ever since I made my switch, my pivot, right? Ever since I have completely tried to reframe things. Why, you know, why do you live in a muck, right? You, like you live in a swamp. Like, I gotta go to work. Uh, can't wait. Or can't wait till it's Friday. Uh, you know, you live for Friday. Yeah. So that when Friday comes, so you're living for two days a week, right. out of seven. You feel better. Those are horrible odds. And then you hate f Sunday past four. Oh, forget about it. Because you have to go to work. 
or whatever you have to do whatever on Monday. So, yeah. I don't know about you, but I don't know if anybody wants to live that way. Want to want to live oh, that way. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I, I get it that you do live that way. But do you want to live that way? And for me, I realized that I was like, I'm living this way and I don't want to live this way. So when you talk about work, you know, I, I've been working since I was a kid. So work and me, I got no problem, you know. But when I reframed work, I want to work. Like it wasn't prior to the reframe. Prior to the reframe, it was, it was heavy. Sure. And even before we, we stress, that's, 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 right. that's all stress is. Stress is just a cycle is the way we psychologically approach something. Something can be challenging, but it doesn't have to be stressful. Big difference. Yeah. Language. Right. And, and even before we opened up the show, we were talking in private and I had told you, you know, it's almost more important for me who I work with where i work yeah yeah i remember you said that mm -hmm. then the money and mm -hmm. you know me i'm all about the money in a sense that's my well yeah listen because it's it's a means of that's my achilles heel if yeah. you want to throw me <laughs> no it's, it's not even that it's it's yeah money's so to do stuff you understand that so and even for me i would say to you the money part is secondary i want to make sure that i'm working with a group of people that are not you know completely unconscious and I've been fortunate enough, you know, where to work I, with some nice people, yeah, especially, you know, in the office that, I, that at Weikert and Brick. Like the reason I ended up there, because I met a guy, I told you, the guy who was my, you know, I'm not allowed to say mentor, but he was. Um, he was beautiful. He's a beautiful guy. And he was doing an open house with another beautiful I mean, I don't mean beautiful physically. I mean yeah, beautiful. you mean as a, as a person. Yeah, and by the way, she's beautiful and he's handsome, so it doesn't matter. But. And then he told me, he goes, I work with a great bunch of people. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. But hardly ever do you hear somebody say, I work with a great bunch of Usually, yeah, that's a great... I work with a bunch of fucking assholes, right? Usually, not here. And so, Fran, if you're watching, that's a testament to how she runs the place. Because, you know, she's also, you could tell, her soul is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the law of attraction worked in that office where people... Good natured people just gravitated. Yeah. You know, everybody has their thing, right? But good natured people work there. And I and to me, you know, I, I can't see myself ever leaving there. You know what I mean? Like I, I love these people, you know? And I think that it makes for a great work environment. But I got off on a tangent. Comment back to the voice. I'm just I'm watching like this. I'm like, yeah, I'm listening. I'm like, I'm back intently to listening. I'm, only I'm like, okay, I, I I get it. I said, and I saw it. I said he went off a little bit there. But this is I came back. You came back. I didn't say shit, bro. You know what I did? I didn't, I didn't say a word. I didn't get off the exit. I went to the fast fuel thing. Yes, no, no. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't go off on a tangent. You were just telling the story. Go ahead. So going back, when you just when I discovered. You know, mindfulness, awareness, and I'm aware of what I'm doing. And like, I'm, I'm not just doing like a robot. Yeah. I'm actually doing. Go, go back to the beginning shows where you said, you know, when, when you have to do the dishes and it's a dreadful 9.9 .9 out of 10 people, if I tell you, you got you to gotta do a dishwasher. You got to unload and you got to load. Yeah, no, it's not, not the most fun thing. And you got to clean the little filter thing in the bottom. Yeah, it's not the most fun thing in the world. Yeah. Like, oh. Nobody here, I know, but when you said mindfully, do it. Feel the dish if you're going to yeah, rinse. Do rinse. it mindfully. Do it, it mindfully because the story in your head disappears when you do it mindfully because you're not entertaining the story. You're giving your focus to what you're doing. Yeah. When you give your focus to what you're doing, your mind does not have the opportunity. Your mind has the opportunity, but doesn't have ultimate control over you. You now are saying, "Wait, my focus goes where I want it to be." Thank you, mind, for the story. My, my, and you keep bringing your focus back. That's like, yeah. that's like mindfulness 101, right? Yeah. The high, good entry level stuff. Do something you hate doing and be mindful when and, you do and, it. And I recall, you know, as long as we're talking about work and about how, how we feel, I recall a situation where, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm still in my other business too, right? But in, uh, in my other business, there was an angry customer. Usually what happens is any angry, I don't know the good, stories i only get the bad ones angry customer can you uh can you tend to this 
I don't even know who's who, what's what. But the way I reframed it, and I explained it to, at that point, I was doing a few sessions with uh, a coach, a life coach, which, you know, heads up, uh, props to Nikki. That's right. That's right. I'm going off on a little tangent, but I'm coming back. I'm, 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 I'm not saying a word. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm listening. If you're a guy who has to deal with complaints, which, you know, you're a head of a business and you've had a complaint or two in your day, <laughs> right? Understatement, but yes. Who, usually, I bet you you dealt with it, right? Yes. So the, the way shit rolls uphill doesn't roll down. Right. <laughs> so the way... What they say, if you want a business, the shit rolls uphill. I can't tell you prior to uh, mindfulness and prior to reframing, I dreaded. I absolutely dreaded making that call. Like, oh my God. Yeah, I can't, look, I can't I'm going to get that. beaten up here. I can understand. So that. you know how I reframed it? I reframed it by saying, I get the opportunity. I have a business. How many people out there say they can they ha- can say they have their own business? I get the opportunity to address uh, a I, po- a potential yeah. problem that I have the opportunity to correct and turn that person from a non-believer to a believer and say, you know what, shit happens, but it's how you addressed it, and that really made a difference, and yeah. I appreciate that, and maybe it didn't Abs- work out. Absolutely, absolutely, one one hundred and ten percent. That was my reframe. Yeah. And when I said it out loud, the, the coach on the she goes, "That is an excellent reframe." Yeah. I said, and I kind of like, yeah, that that was that works. And I did that Even because he, literally there was there was in, was it impending doom. Uh, impending doom <laughs> happening, like a situation was brewing, and I I I approach it with that mindset, bro. It could have been luck. I don't. No, I so I don't, I don't think I don't think it's luck. I don't think it's luck. No, because you don't no. think luck might have had a hand. I mean, yeah, I don't know. No, listen, I, I don't. I, so I don't. I don't believe in good luck or bad luck. I just uh, things happen for in reason, one way or another. But that you could be fortunate and unfortunate, I guess, in a situation. But I think it was ninety nine. I'm going to say ninety five percent of how it turned out was because you took a mindful approach to it instead of an egotistical approach to it, right? I mean, you know, I know this, 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 this kind of goes, this is kind of what we started talking about. I even know what we started talking about. We're from the eclipse to doing and being, oh, it made you but, feel but small. no, so this does tie into because the, if you're, if you're a person who just keeps doing things, you don't have that opportunity. You don't get to not, you don't got to, you don't get to uh. be a person who could take an angry customer, who could take an angry person, who could take someone who's frustrated and sprinkle a little presence in their life to say to, to, to say it one way or enlighten them a little bit and make them look and go, oh, okay, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, I understand. You disarm them. That's the word I'm looking for. You, dis, you could disarm that person, a person who's ready to engage. Their ego is now locked. This is like, you know, Cannons uh, military, I mean, sniper rifle, you are in the crosshairs. That guy is going to hear what I got to say about me. Yeah. I'm going to give it to him. And then the person comes, you start talking to them, and they just like, they might start angry. And then all of a sudden, because like we've said a thousand times, A, you're a reflection for them. So they see, they don't, they don't see what, they see a reflection of the way they want to be. And you're like, that person will look at you and go, Okay, well, well, all right. Okay, you're not attacking. You're not, you're not feeding their ego. You're not feeding the issue. You're trying to solve it mindfully and, and, and with presence. And when you do that, so you're saying it was luck. I don't believe it was luck. I believe it's the way you approach it is 110%. And a lot of that comes from the words we use, how we use them, how we reframe a situation. And the only way you could do any of that shit, and I say shit just because it's the way I talk, only way you could do any of that stuff, any of it, reframe, Changing your language is if you have awareness. If you don't have awareness, if you're a doer and you just go through life doing every day, you're gonna you're gonna snap at people. You're gonna lose your shit. You're gonna be angry. You're gonna be mean. You're gonna be um, react. You're gonna react. You're not gonna respond. You're gonna do everything that honestly and shameless plug that I talk about in my book. That you that is a is a negative way to to live life. So like the got to. No. You get to. So today, you, you were able, to, you had an, there was an opportunity for you to be present, right? 
Yeah. You will sit in there and go, I get today to sit outside and watch this amazing event happen. That's it. I get the opportunity to actually watch it. I get to watch the sunrise today. I get to watch that the ocean crashing against those rocks. I get to experience these things. Yes. I also get to deal with the crap that comes with life. You know, family, which can be issues, toxic people in your life, the work, customer. the angry customer. I mean, life is not void of, you know, Terrible. balls of poop that it's going to throw at you. It's not. It's, it's going to give you that stuff. But you get a choice in how you want to handle it. So people who walk around pissed off all day long, angry at the world, complaining that life is flying by, they don't get a second to breathe. It's because you don't take a second to breathe. I don't know anybody who works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if you are, my friend, I will give you one piece of advice. You can't take any of the shit that you're making with you when you die. So if you're not stopping... You know, I love these old adages because people gloss or glaze over them. Stop and smell the roses. There's, a, there's so much meaning behind that. We said as kids, stop and smell the roses. And we go, oh, okay, done, done. No, stop and smell the roses. What does it actually mean? Stop and breathe. Stop and breathe. Breathe. Like truly sit there, take some breaths and breathe. Because you get an opportunity to do something so many people who were never born or never will be born don't have the opportunity to experience. I think we're, I think we're, where, um, what was the word you said before? Not blessed. Um, oh, uh, we have the privilege. We have the privilege. We have the privilege to actually experience life every day for its, for its quote unquote good and quote unquote bad, right? For its happy times and its sad times, for its, it's uh, beautiful days and it's rainy, shitty days. We get to experience it all. And if you don't have, if, 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 if you're going through life, and this is circling back to what we said in the beginning of the show, just doing, 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 and doing again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Eight to ten. Yeah. Rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. And, and, and if you, I mean, because I was there. So if you continue unaware, <laughs> that day becomes heavy i use the word heavy it becomes heavy for you because it's like ugh, i gotta that's carry a good word. i gotta carry this load that's a good word like but if if you're able to find awareness yeah. it's like all the things that you do become different lighter lighter you said heavy before let's go the other way they, they become, become lighter. different and 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 still like you said the issue may still be there you still have to set the alarm clock because you still gotta wake up you still you know because you can set the alarm clock because you have to wake up because you have a beautiful day ahead of you, or you can set the alarm clock because God damn, I got to go to work. You decide. <laughs> you, 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 you get to decide. You decide. And that's everything in life. You get to decide. That's the craziness of this. This is the part that I'm still trying to like grasp. Do we really decide? Yes, you decide. It's, so watch it. is it that simple? Ready? Watch this. It's that simple. Is it simple to do? Depends. How attached to you are the? Th how attached to you are, are? How attached are you to that thing in your head? Good point. That barks orders. That's it. Good point. That's the only thing. I got a review. Somebody, um, Mary Keeler, I think it was her name. Anyway, some uh, on Amazon. She just put a review for my book. Beautiful long review. But one of the basic things that they were saying was how it's a simple, relatable book. And this is it. it is. Buy the book, right? I think you should buy the book. Yeah. Not because I'm going to make money off of it. Because <laughs> believe me, that's a lot of books make money off of it. It's, it's because I honestly think what I put into this book, when I, when I, and I'm realizing that this now from the, from, the, from the reviews that I've gotten and from people who've read the book and I've spoken to them, it's... I stri it, this book is stripped down to be, this is how simple it is. Yeah. This is what, by the way, Eastern spiritual teachings have been saying for the last, for eons. Like, it's, it's this simple. We don't need to put the layers and the layers and the layers and the layers and layers on top. Watch it. Get rid of the layers. Yeah. It's this simple. How attached are you to that thing in your head, your mind? I don't understand what that means, John. Okay, so you're very attached. By the way, no problem. Not the end of the world at all. No, we all were. We all... We all come into this world kind of getting attached because this is the thing that talks to us and we listen, we hear it. But there's, there's a very easy way to change that. Practicing mindfulness. Practice. Practice mindfulness. Practice. 
started with the small steps, smaller, smaller, bigger. I mean, bigger, bigger, bigger. Then you take bigger tasks yeah. and you become mindful. And then you start applying it to people in your life. You become mindful. You start hearing your, it's, you know what the best part of it is? When you hear a reaction in your head, you look at it, diagnose it. Like, and I mean, analyze it, but like your, your awareness sees it. And then this higher intelligence comes in and go, wow, that's what John would have said last time. And just cast it aside or sees, look at how, look up like, Somebody will say something, it'll trigger you. Here comes an automatic response. And imagine you get to see that automatic response happening in real time without reacting to it and going, wow, I see what John wants to say. I see why John wants to feel jealous. Or, and I don't say I. I say I see why John wants to. This, this thing in my head that's created this, this personality or this, you know, these, these um, ways of thinking or these ways of reacting internally to things. It's when you get... With, and it, by the way, you don't have to do this for 14 years in a Zen. Like, you don't need to go to a monastery to spend 14 years. That's if right. you do, beautiful. Like we said last week, right? Go for it. But you don't need to do that. You could practice it. Simple things like we've said, if you listen to all our episodes, we've given you so many different examples of how to do it. Yeah. Today was a great one. I'm telling you what you said. So if you're in the practice of mindfulness, what's going to happen is you're going to have stimulus. Yes, I like that. Stimulus, Stimulus comes your way. Yes. And now here comes response, right? With the practice of mindfulness, you have this. I have the options. I could take this response. I could take... Because you see the response like <laughs> in real time. And it's not just one. For me, this is the way it works for me. Here's the old response. The hardwired knee-jerk. Here's Yeah, it's going to be there. Sure. Here it is. It takes a very long time well, for that one to come that, that is what I would say without, because I'm, I'm unaware, I'm unconscious. So here it goes. Go. Duh. Fuck you. You come in front of me. Fuck you. But here comes a chosen response. Here's three. We, we come up with three. Oh, I like this one. Uh, yeah, you come up with three, come up with ten. You come I like with, this one. It, it, it's, and, yeah. And I like this one with a little bit of this one. Yeah. It's amazing. And don't get me wrong, we're human. I was going to say that, yeah. We will succumb to moments. All of us do. But let me tell you something. Critique if you want. I got no problem being 10%, 15%, whatever percentage, if you're going to put it in a balance sheet. And the, the rest is chosen responses. It's, it's, living, it's living in another <clears throat> manner. The, you know what the funny part is? is those alternate answers, let's just you call them alternate answers, whatever they might be, have always been there. Yes. You've just never heard them. Son of a bitch. Like and you, you've never. So instead of responding to a situation, you've just always reacted because you learn to listen. Okay. My mind is saying this for whatever reason, whatever reason that behavioral trait was formed, upbringing, environment, social, economics, whatever it could be, uh, what you were surrounded by growing up, you hear that and you just follow it. But there's always that other voice. Like I like to call it, our intuitive voice, and that's kind of even what I call it in, on my website, it's that intuitive voice, that, that conscious voice that we have. And that's kind of, I think, our, our moral compass. That's what we are as beings, like what we really want in life, what we really want to do in life. And we don't hear that because we follow that first one because we're not, we don't know that we're aware yet. So our awareness is there, but it's just, we're not, we're not focusing on it. We're watching just our mind and listen to our mind, listen to our mind. So one day you're able to just pull back an inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, and you're able to see and go, wow, look at this. I can watch all this crap in my head. Not that they, it doesn't feel good. A lot of the shit sometimes in your head is going to be painful. You're not going to want to hear it or think about it or see it, or if it's an image or a thought. But with, with that awareness, you're able to pull back and, Take a breath and say, that is not useful. That is not helpful, but this isn't. That, it's always been there, but until you actually flex that muscle, let's just say, or yep. work it out or practice it, you don't get the opportunity to hear those other, other more highly intelligent responses that are going to come up that are in the benefit of your community, the people around you, instead of the ego, which wants to say, how do I, how do, like, I need, like, how do I get justified? How do I get my word in how do i you know how do i get my credit for this how do i 
I, 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 I. But it's it's not the I that spiritual teachers talk about, like the I and the presence and awareness. It's an egotistical. You talk about your ego. Your ego, the egotistical. Actually, I, yeah. your ego has shoved his hand up your back, and he's doing this. He's doing this. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you for a favor? Because we're running out of time. Maybe for the next episode, if we can go into that inner voice, if we can go into that that inner voice, okay. kind of like what you were talking about <clears throat> on your on your blog, where or on your website, the inner voice, the the you, the real you, right? Yeah, because the conscious voice. I I, I want to deep dive into that, but in a fresh, clean. But you know so, I mean? yeah, but so even when I say conscious voice, it's still just a voice in your head. Sure, right? Like any other voice. But it's one that doesn't have dialogue around it. So I'm talking about the, your intuitive voice. That there's no dialogue with that one. It's, so if it's you, basic. It's basic. So if you're hearing, yeah, well, but I think, or maybe, I'm not sure. That's the analyzing. That's the intellectual mind. That's this beautiful tool that we have that, you know, can do things. The intuitive voice is just something that it might not even be a word. A lot of times it could be a feeling, like a nudge. It feels right, doesn't feel right. And a lot of times it, it shows itself and it's, it's a glimpse. And if, you're, if you feel it and you hear it, you know it and follow it. If you start questioning it, now, you, now you're in the thinking mind again. Okay, but that's the kind of thing yeah. that I want to deep dive into because now you're in the thinking mind again. I, I really, really, that really. That can be trippy. I know. Yeah. It, can sound, it can sound a little trippy, but it's not. So people call it your intuition, your gut feeling. Like you've been say, have you ever said that? Oh, sure, I got a gut sure. feeling. My gut tells me. My gut tells me, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Why do we not listen to our gut feeling? Why do we not listen to that intuitive voice? Because the mind comes in and wants to give you a reason to why this needs to be done a certain way. Like it, it, so here, here's 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 the way I see it and tell me if I'm if I'm sort of correct. So th this is kind of how I see it where there is this being and I use the word being, but there's just being inside of you, right? And I'm gonna, Soul, your energy, right, yeah. Point to the gut. Yeah, whatever you want to use. It's almost like you know who that is, and that person knows who you are. But with, yeah, with, with all that has happened and transpired and all your uh, unconscious ways, it's been like smothered in rocks and it's got to climb out of layers of rocks that has been i don't even think it has to climb out i just think we just don't listen to it it's like right there but we still yet do not want to listen to it you're right but, but so, there's a reason so, so, so as, as, as yeah. I, th I believe right my <clears throat> the way i kind of see life when people are born you know, see a child is born a child is born innocent right, right. like Fresh children are born, money hungry, right. egotistical, Blank. murderers, killers, Blank rapists, mur uh, burglars. Yeah. They they're not born like that. Right. Their environment could mold them right. to be a certain way, maybe. It affects maybe, them. right? There might be I'm not, I'm not a there might be some right. neuro neurological issues that right. can lean somebody to have bad judgment. I understand that. But I think as inherent beings, we all want to do, we all want to be joyful, helpful people. When the thinking mind comes in and the I starts to form, not the I being, the I identity, the identity, John. Well, now John needs to be better. John needs to be the best. John needs to succeed. John needs to have this. John needs to have that. John needs to be justified. John needs to be heard. John needs to be credited. John needs to be John, 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 John. All of a sudden, that <clears throat> that natural state of joy that maybe we, that, we, that we're given as when we're born starts to go away because our mind starts to say, "I need to survive." Yeah, those are the rocks on top. Those, of those become the rocks yeah. on top. I need to do this. I need to be like this. I need to be like this. And we stop hearing that intuitive voice that is more about helping community, us, not me, I, all the time. We don't hear the one that says, this is what's better. This is where you should go. This is the, this is the path. We don't want to hear because, yeah, yeah, that's the path. I, I, I kind of hear it, but that's harder. I'm just going to do this instead. And we choose not to do that thing, right? What's best for us isn't always easiest for us, right? A lot of times what's best for us is a more difficult, bumpy, 
maybe pain in the ass kind of road. But there's a reason why we're kind of being nudged that way. And I, I think uh, most people, a lot of people just don't hear that or don't feel that anymore because they get so clouded with analyzing and overanalyzing and, and doing and, and get caught up in the, in the mind saying, okay, next, 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 next. They stop hearing to that intuitive voice that wants to tell them what they should do. So I had one of my clients I was dealing with, she wanted to clean something out. She was trying to clean something out. She was getting torn between this and that, this and that. And I think, I think we, we may have even spoke about this, right? Helped her find her intuition. I said, I'm going to ask you a question. Don't think about it. Don't think. When I ask, just give me the answer that feels and comes right away. Do you want to keep this? Yes or no? No. So then why have we been delaying for the last six weeks? Well, you know, because I say, see, that's the thinking mind. You, you already know the answer. You just don't, you know your answer. You're just trying to convince yourself that that answer is either right or wrong. You know the answer. If that's where you want to be and that's what you want to do and that's what feels right, why are we questioning it so much? I'm not saying that like, you shouldn't, if it's especially a big decision in life, yeah. you shouldn't take a minute and pause and say, okay, I'm going to intellectually think about this. But I realize that this is where I want to be, yeah. right? This is what I want to do in life. I think a lot of people, if, if more people heard that, not that life would be great, but I think things would be so much different. Like people would actually be engaging in things that they want to do. Somebody wants to be a doctor. That's great, right? They, they, they just love to do it. And then all of a sudden they, they start to hate it because, oh, the insurance companies, I don't get paid anymore, this, that, the politics, and everything is kind of skewed and the mind gets involved and tells them why they hate to do this. Teachers. We were, just talking, about we were talking about that. You said that, that uh, what was his name? Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer. That, that beautiful story about that kid and the teacher who the child changed the teacher's perspective because yeah. the teacher got skewed. Like the teacher, when she started doing this, she was doing it for what reason? Love of, love love of the practice. Th that's why we start most, most people who are teachers, either cops or you know, and those or firemen or uh, even uh, spiritual teachers, they start out because they want to do something because they want to help. They want to change somebody's life. They want to, especially teachers, they want to mold somebody. Yeah. And then what happens? Politics, parents, dealing with people. And they're... listening to your mind saying, why, why, why? They're right. This sucks. This is the worst. Oh my God, the stress, the this, the that. You stop listening to that voice that was telling you why you saw it. And that beautiful story where that kid changed the way, made that teacher realize, I'm, I'm not here to teach subjects. I'm here to teach children. I thought that was, I, mean, I thought that was great. Like you're here yeah. to mold the life. You're here to teach these children how to be, yes, subjects and how to add and write and all that stuff, but also how to think and how to grow and how to, yeah. how to, how to relate with their minds and how to relate with their feelings. And that little immature pipsqueak <laughs> pain in the ass kid that you see right before you today can go this way or oh, that way. 100%. And if you treat him like a pain in the ass, pipsqueak, he'll go that way. And if you treat him with a little respect and you show him a little dignity, you show him a little love, he might go this way, the right route. Yeah. You know, we don't know, but certainly I think that that story uh, 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 reminded me that we need to be reminded. So I sent that story to my wife who's a teacher, in, the, in an inner city environment where she sees a lot of stuff. I'm sure. And there's a lot of stuff that pulls on her heartstrings. Like, she brings her homework. Like, she brings her feelings. Yeah, home. I'm sure. And I think a story like that, I think it's a palate cleanser where, whoa, that's, whoa, that's why I'm a teacher. Not because it's, uh, it's this freaking thing. It's, you gotta get that, you gotta get that. We all got that, but if we attach to it and get too caught up in it, then we forget. Why are you doing it? Right, we forget place. everything. Right, you're no longer present. You're no longer not. Not that my wife. No, well, it's, it's not about your wife. It's more as a teacher. I can understand why you sent it to her. It's a great reminder for any teacher to have. And what did we talk about? Even a few weeks ago or months ago, we just need reminders. Yeah, you need reminders. Look, for, even for me, they're they're great to have those reminders. Absolutely, I, yeah, I think no. it's fantastic. So the videos, watch videos of, of things that are going to, and I, I said the other day, right? So your, your subconscious is the mouth, put it in, and the conscious digests it, and it's going to be giving you programming. Okay, so if that's the case, 
give yourself uh, positive videos that you things that you want to learn, things that you feel are you know. Right, we said this last week when we were kids, what we learned: garbage in, garbage yeah. out. The the universal lens. If I, I'm not trying to toot our horn, but if you are on, uh, if if you're on the drive to work or from work to or from or whatever, I mean, a lot of people spend a lot of time in the car. This is a perfect thing you put on. I get it. We're no, not, you know, the, the, and I actually say thing. I, it's, I get it. What I know. What were you gonna say? We, you know, we're not bikini girls. We're not, uh, you know, ragging on politicians. We're not, you know, we're not doing the obvious. And, uh, and what have we said before? That's not this, this show is for, and this isn't elitist when we say this. This show is for people who want to get out of their own head, who realize. This doesn't work. Like I'm, right. I'm, I'm tired of playing this. We're comfortable. As, as 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 Jim Carrey said, it goes. Depression is your body saying, "I'm tired of playing this fucking avatar. I'm tired of it. I'm That's tired of putting. Like the, I'm tired of putting. I'm tired of being this thing that you want me to be. Because there's something at odds. Yes, that's your soul. That's your. Yeah. That a lot of people look. I'm not a UX 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 a scientist and a and a spiritual teacher. You're gonna get two different. A therapist, you're going to probably get two different answers on this. One's going to tell you it's a chemical imbalance and you're up and the other one's going to tell you it's your inner being telling you something. Like when, when I'm burning, when I was burning out, it, it wasn't, I don't, because I, I, I didn't need any re-chemical balancing. It was my, it was my, I honestly say it was my soul, my being telling me I'm fucking tired of this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm tired. And he came out as OCD. He flipped intrusive it. thoughts. Flipped the table. It, it, like, how do I get your attention? Like, this is, I, I honestly, I mean, I feel like, how do I get your attention? It could be a life event. It could be a lot of things that happened. For me, that's what it was. For me, it was, how do I get your attention? Boo. Oh, I'm listening. Oh, I'm listening. I'm, I, you got my attention now. Do you like what? The, uh, no, I don't, I don't like this. So let's find a better way. And it forced me to, it, it put me on a path to see things differently. Hey, you don't have to get there, but uh, you know, I, I, if you don't listen to that voice long enough, it starts to, you start to eat yourself alive. Like people who are really bitter, if they don't listen to that, they don't listen to their intuition. They listen to that high, higher intelligence, intuitive voice, conscious voice, whatever name you want to give it. I mean, it's all the same thing. Yeah. When you, when uh, you have that anxiety it. that's eating you inside. Something is at odds. It, Something is at odds. Yeah. Your brain is not working right. Nothing is working right because it's it, on a lot. There's no alignment anymore. Right. You're, you're, un, you're un, and when you're when that disalignment, I guess that's a word, right? Unaligned. Or, unaligned yeah. happens. You're gonna have these kind of symptoms. It's, I mean, again, you ask two people, you're probably gonna get you ask three people, you're gonna get three different answers. Right. This is from what I've experienced. I've noticed it happening in my. I've noticed it happening in me. Right. So if I'm look, it could be my own perception. Like at the end of the day, who the hell knows? But this is how I see things, right? So uh, this is how I, I've seen it work in my mind and with people I've spoken with. And you know, Henry is a testament to it himself. He does it. I mean, he's, you're watching. Like if you uh, yeah. go back, watch show number one and then watch the progression. And I'm live. Like I'm real. Like there's many times we've recorded a show, you know, literally I was crying not too long before. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've, we've, both, we've, we've both been there. <laughs> you know? 67 episodes, we've both been there. And you 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 know i feel like a butterfly you know what i mean like i feel like a caterpillar you know cocoon butterfly like i feel like i've been through the stages and at any moment you could turn to a stupid caterpillar again. <laughs> but no you could feel like a stupid caterpillar but you won't turn into one because you'll have the awareness to realize that you're not a caterpillar yeah but going back to your point yeah you, when you said you ask you could ask a therapist you could ask a scientist right you could ask you know all these things so, like, the beauty of this is this is like. So, I had this little discussion with uh, my manager at the Weicker, uh, Fran, and we're just talking. And and she was, I was talking about mental health, and I was talking about therapy. And then she she starts to go off, like, yeah, the therapy. And I said, I said, okay, great. And you get therapy. And don't get me wrong. People need therapy. Some people need therapy. Got it, right? It saved my life. But. Once you figure out where these things are coming from, then what? So in other words, you know, I act this way because, you know, my parents abandoned me when I was little. So that's, therefore, I act this way, right? That's, you know, let's, I, I made up a random. It could open, the, uh, therapy opens, it, 
I made up a random opens story. Opens the door. Yeah, yeah, definitely so opens the door. So I act this way because my parents abandoned me when I was little. Okay, great. Now that you have that information, what is the different action that you're going to? What is different about your train of thought? What is different about your practice life? You're offered, a, you're offered actually, you're offered an opportunity to go to, to down two different paths right there. That was a great example with the, my parents, whatever, right? Left me when I was a kid or do I go down the path of resentment or do I go down the path of acceptance? Yeah. So now you know maybe why you act the way you act. You realize where that betrayed. And on a higher level, you don't even, to, you, acceptance can happen without knowing what the, what the reason is. I agree 100%. But sometimes that reason is important and, right. I, and I'm all for that. All, all for right. that, 100%. All for that. But now you know. Okay, this is why it happened. This is why you had that thought, John. Okay, great. There's your choice. Now you so have a choice. choice. <laughs> Which choice? How do I make him go away? That's not one of the choices. Do you want to go down? The, well, no, no, it is. You go down the choice of how do I make him go away? How do I make him go away? Or you go down the choice of accept them, that they're there, and move on with your life. And you're going to have Practice a, acceptance. Practice mindfulness. You're going to have a hell of a life. By the Beautiful. way, this one's going to feel simpler, right? Because you'll have an answer. The answer will make you feel good for 10 minutes. Then you're going to have another answer. Maybe for three days you feel good. Then you're going to you feel good for two days. But then you're going to have more relapses, more relapses, relapses, relapses. This one, it's going to take a little bit of work. You're going to sit with a lot of uncomfortable shit for a while. But once that light goes from dim to a little bit brighter, because the more you practice it, the, those two paths, I can't tell you how far apart they, they actually yeah. are. In the, in the quality of life that you will end up living. So I, I love that because therapy could open the door and I, therapy opened the door for me, gave me two paths. I could have gone down the path of how do I keep fixing this? And my therapist would be like, we're not trying to fix it. Or I could have gone down the path of I'm open to acceptance and mindfulness and teach me more. Let me know what this is about. I think that is huge. Yeah. I, I think that is really, that's the spice right there because a lot of people go to therapy. And I'm not saying anything bad about any therapist at all, because no. because much like doctors, much like lawyers, much like accountants, much like any, There's they're good. all they're all created uh, differently, not yeah. equally. Yeah, no, right? yeah. so not all are good, not all are bad, but you know, there's everything in between. Some have their strengths and weaknesses. So there will be a therapist that'll hook you and string you, and they see in front of them dollar sign as opposed to a human being. Unfortunately, I know life there's life coaches who do that too. Hell, it happens. Yeah. It happens. Let's, let's just be real. Let's, it, let's talk real. It happens. But when you arrive to the point, when you arrive to the point that you, the aha moment, oh my God, that's right. Shit. I used to get beat like every day. So that has to have that effect on me, of course. And that's why I act like this. Oh my God, of course. Okay, great. Now that you know this. Now, now what? So we just sit here and harp on it? No. We have real time. You probably got married. I, I, let's say you got married and you have a family to tend to. You have a wife or a husband or a spouse, whatever to tend to. What face do you want them to live with? The anguished or I'm on a new path. Like I know what happened to me and I'm choosing to live differently. Holy shit. You are. Yeah. Because I have the power to live differently. Have the power to choose. Forget power it. of choice. It's, it's one after choice. the other. It's, it's a snowball that's going to go in your direction. Life throws curveballs. Doesn't mean anything that, you know, yeah, you're, yeah, you know yeah. you're, dealing with adversity has nothing to do with mindfulness and presence. That's, that's life. Life is going to deal, is going to give you adversity whenever it feels like it. That has nothing to do with it. But being in a mindful, aware state, you tend to react to it differently. And Sometimes people get it. Sometimes people don't get it. So, I mean, listen, if you I, honestly, and, and we're 66 episodes in, right? 67. I think the book came out probably in the early 20s. Right. So 40 episodes. I've, I've spoken about my book a handful of times. I'm actually going to tell you, go out and get it. That's right. And I, I, I'll tell you this, go out and buy the book. And for every book somebody buys, I will take the money I make and donate it to, to, a, to a charity. God's honest truth. I, I, I give you my word. It's not about the money. I honestly think this book is a hundred pages of this is how you could get there, but it's going to, you got to be willing to do a little bit of work. You got to be willing to see things differently 
And you got to be willing to say, okay, I know what my mind is telling me, but that's not necessarily how things are in life. If you're willing to read it and read this book more than once, read it twice, read it three times, read it. More, that's what this, the, the lady Mary had said. She goes, this is a book you should read several times over and over again, because why that repetition, reading it again, reading it again, because it's short, it's compact. It gets to the point. It starts to change the way you actually perceive things. Because you're starting to realize that you wow, this awareness has to grow. So if you haven't, go to Amazon and pick it up. And I swear I will I will give I, I will I will start a tally. Every time a book is sold, I will come on and say, Thank you for buying the book. Here's five dollars, it's gonna go here. Here's five and I will keep that money, I will put it aside, I will create a fund or I'll do it every week, and I'll donate it to Make a Wish Foundation, which is one that's close to us. I'll donate it to St. Jude's Hospital, which I'm I'm a supporter of. I'll donate it somewhere. I don't I don't want the money. It's because I'm not going to get rich off of it unless it comes to New York Times bestseller. Then hey, if, if Oprah blesses you, if Oprah blesses me, hey Oprah. But it's because I actually think it could help. I actually think it it could help. John, yeah. I didn't I didn't believe it when I first bought it, but when I first wrote it, but now I've I've heard from people saying it's like okay, it does it makes sense? I'm gonna tell you now, you don't have to say all that. Honestly, I, I'm a beneficiary of your book, and I'm telling you, what you said was all true. And you don't have to donate anything to anybody. Let me explain why. Because when an artist creates art, they barely ever say, I'm going to sell this painting for 10 minutes. I went, I went back to it. It's not about the money without even realizing yeah. it. Look at that. And when a, human. when a comedian sits down and spends hours and hours refining the punchline and the setup, yeah, they got to make a living. But they're more concerned about making sure that their art is good. Your art is good. Your art is more than good. Your art is fantastic. And be at peace with having something out there that if a hundred million people buy it and you become an incredible success, you don't have to give that away. No, I I understand that. It's just it's my it's also my like, like that's your thing. I've, I've, I have I've, my thing. You have I've, your thing. I've taken this book and I've left it in coffee shops. I've left it in air. I, I've bought copies, left them on tables. I've left. I went to the airport. I was. I had my book with me. I was just reading it for shits and giggles one day. I left it there. Like I'll scatter them, not because I want somebody to. Because it, I don't. I'm not. I don't get nothing. I leave it there. It's random. I want somebody to pick it up and read it. I right. want somebody to pick it up and read it because I want somebody to go. Holy shit! Like this makes. This makes sense. No fluff, but it makes sense. This is unorthodox, and I'm saying it in front of the camera. So, I would. I would like to invite. No. That if somebody gets the book and reads it and they want to chat about it on on camera oh we'd have them as a guest absolutely i i would invite i would invite that possibility yeah. because i think that that is fantastic i want to i want to touch oh well not physically don't get don't get don't you get i want to touch the person <laughs> that just read the book and they're having one eye uncovered the other eye is still covered i want to help them Wow. I want to help them go, yeah. No, both my eyes are on yeah. I want to, the guy who pushes you over the edge, be, you know, get, like I said, we're always mindful pushers. You know what I mean? We've well, been, it's, it's, I, I want to say we're pushers. I say we're, 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 yeah, we're not preachers. We're trying to, we're, we're preachy. We're, we're not preachy. No, because preachy would be, you must do this and listen to me and follow me. And it's not preachy. It's we're trying to enlighten share people and share what we went through. How, yes, like, I climbed the mountain, not that I'm at the top of it, but I'll say, I made it across this ravine. Let me tell you how I made it across the ravine. I don't want to sit here and go, look, I made it, you didn't. He made it, you didn't. He made it, you didn't. No, he wants it. Henry wants to say, look, I made it across. Come here, let me show you. No, no, I, don't, I just want to show you how I did it. And this way you can show somebody else and they can show somebody else yeah. and they can show somebody else. And like what spiritual teachers and people are talking about, even more people or great therapists are talking about, like with ACT and stuff like that, even more people find out about it. And you change, it's about changing people's lives. That's all and, it's about. and if you catch a child young enough, I... Who's willing to listen, right? Because it's, it's, right. it's a special... This is a special, special skill that that child is going to have all sorts of things thrown at him and that blindly they'll just accept like we did. Just, yeah, that's how it is. That, yeah. That's the news. <laughs> that, that'll be next week's episode. How to teach your children about mindfulness at a young age. Really? Yeah. 
That's fantastic. Yeah. Right. How to teach your children about mindfulness at a young age. But how, just, how to teach them. If you have young children, if you have te- kids who are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, come into episode, it'll be 68, 68. Uh, listen to, you should listen to the other 67 too, but listen to 68 <laughs> and it'll be how to teach your children about mindfulness at a young age and how you can show them how to make that connection to where they're not, they don't think, they don't believe everything they think. And all of a sudden, you could catch a kid at a young age and stop them from having a, you know, serious depressions or anxieties or low self esteem or you know uh, defeating egos that that beat on them and you could you could you could not that the thoughts won't be there but you could give them the tools to navigate that and ho- you know hopefully save a life in in multiple ways but save a life by giving them a better life not actually maybe physically saving their life God forbid you know there was a child who wanted to do something you know, um, crazy or something, you know, uh, that's fantastic. You know, like that. So anyway, that's it. I know we went a little long today, but whatever. That's what we do. We don't do this because I'm trying to hit a timer. We do this right. because we're, uh, we, we, we do know you will zone out after three hours. <laughs> come back and come back, come back out, come back in. It's okay. All right. So that's it. I hope everybody enjoyed today's potpourri of an episode. We have these once in a while. We're a little bit all over the place, but um, poopery smells nice. So yeah, enjoy. Not poopery. No, not. Poopery. I'll be honest. Poopery smells like poop. poop. Yeah, poop. Okay. Well, all my eclipse fans, we all made it. We survived <laughs> the solar eclipse. We're still here. Yay! Yay! The Martians didn't come. The Earth didn't turn into a fiery volcano. We're so we're still here. Yeah, still here. Armageddon did not come, and the the wrath of God did not. He did not strike the world down today. Any other? Oh, and the government didn't do something crazy. Uh, that was the other spirit. Right. There was, I, there was all these conspiracy theories. So right. it came, it went, and we're making dinner. So yeah, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's peep, it. Peep. Honestly, if the takeaway, start with the book. Just start. Easy read. You'll feel like it's. It's probably not. If you're a fifth grader, you're good. Oh, it's it's. Oh, <laughs> right. It's six to seventh grade reading. There you but go. It, it's. Yeah. Okay, I don't think it's purposely done because I'm not exactly Ernest Hemingway, but no. it was done with the intention of I don't want to use big words because I don't like using big words either. Like, let's keep it simple and, and let's get to the point. It's let's, really let's, good. Watch this. Get to the point and yeah. hopefully it helps. Anyway, so. Enjoy. Enjoy. If you do get it, that's great. I appreciate it. Let us know. It. And Let if, us you wanna, know. if you want to come on and yes, talk about it, you could I think be, we'll... Even if you're somebody who already bought it and read it and you're watching and you want to come on, let us know. I'll have you on. Shoot us a message. Yeah. All right. I got a meatloaf to go eat. All right. All right. Everybody, have a great week. We will see you guys next time. Very good. Peace Take out. Take care, man. Bye bye. The insights and discussions that we speak about on our show are our own opinions and based on our life experiences. If you or someone in your family or someone you know is suffering and in need of help, please get them that help through medical attention or seeking proper therapy. Again, what we speak about are based on our experiences and not intended to be taken as a form of therapy. Thank you.